Hey, this is Richie Marufo from the Barbed Wire Open Mic Series, a.k.a. BWOMS, and you're listening to the El Paso Creatives Podcast Show. If you haven't already, make sure to follow them on Instagram, YouTube, and other social media. Without further ado, here's the show. Check it. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a photographer here in El Paso, and I'm here with El Paso Creatives doing the El Paso Creatives podcast. Awesome, Michael. What a pleasure to have you here at the Mono Gallery. Um, you've been here before, right? You did the photography event and everything, too. How, how I want to talk about that first before I get you to introduce yourself. Like, how did you think that photography event was, like, the whole mixing poetry and photography, especially as a photographer yourself? Um, I thought it was really interesting. I haven't really done anything like that before. Uh, I think the most I've done that's similar is I worked with a poet on a book, poetry book that they were doing, and um, they kind of shot back and forth with me on uh, some of my pictures that they wanted to use uh, that they wrote poems about. That's the closest I ever got to that. Um, but it was really cool. It was really cool to have like a prompt to shoot for that was kind of abstract. Yeah, it, really it kind, of, kind of challenges you in a little bit, no? A little right, bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So for people who don't know what you do and who you are, just give yourself like a, a quick two minute introduction of what it is that you do and who you are. So uh, I'm a photographer. I've been doing photography for the past 10 years, um, mostly doing film photography. I just barely stepped into digital. Um, and mostly doing architecture and landscape and um, barely stepping into por- portraiture right now. And then yeah. I see that you do a lot of film and I feel like that's something that's always challenging for people to get into, like shooting film. Everybody's always digital or even with their phones. So it's just like, speak a little bit on that. Like, how did you start photography? Okay, let's start like that. How did you start photography? What got you into it? Um, so photography for me is I just saw like a cool old camera sitting on a shelf, like in a, uh, I think it was a thrift shop. Yeah, when was, it was this? Like, it was when I was Ooh, 14, 15? 14, so damn, okay. Yeah, right. uh, it was like $5. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Um, I At the time, I was living here, and I was living in the lower valley. So I would walk around like EPCC, like the campus or whatever, just to like kind of figure out what I was doing. And that's where I met a professor there shooting, uh, doing photography. Yeah. So uh, he actually let me sit in on a lot of his classes, and that's how I learned. Damn, okay. And so I guess going into the film photography, what what is something like I guess that you had to learn right away? What was the first thing you learned going into film? Because film and digital are two freaking different things, you know. So like yeah, completely different. How, how do you animals. compare the both and like what's the difference between both and the biggest thing out of it? Um, so the biggest thing about film photography is you have to learn how to have no ego at all. You no can't ego. have okay. any ego going into film photography because if anyone tells you they picked it up right away and they shot like a banger roll right off the bat, they're lying. No one is good at film photography right off the bat. Okay. their first role is always crap <laughs> okay yeah no because yeah. you also have to like uh process it and everything too right yeah yeah you have to do everything like with chemicals and all that and there's so many ways to mess up along the way before you get an actual image wow yeah okay so it's a huge very steep learning curve mm-hmm. and you have to be ready to take a gut punch in your ego <laughs> yeah. yeah and so so what are the some things that, that you learned right away when you got into film um I actually, one of the first and hardest things that I had to train myself to do is, um, is learn how to like, quote unquote, see in black and white. Yeah. Um, just cause I guess that class was more centered on black and white cause that's the easiest to process, gotcha. uh, chemically. So I had to learn how to see the tonality with light instead yeah. of seeing like color values and all that. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And so what is it when you're taking a photo and I guess film taking a photo and film and taking a photo and digital is two different things on like how you see and what you're taking a picture of what do you more focus on when you're going out and capturing a photo what is something that you really want to tell behind a film photo and even a digital photo so when i go shoot film i always have an intent to shoot i have like an idea in my head of what i want to shoot and like the general framing of it um like i want to say two three weeks ago i went out to manjo point or a Mancho Lookout, I don't remember. Um, but I had this frame in mind where, I don't know if you've ever been there. No, I don't even know. No, so mm-hmm. it's a lookout that looks over down into the valley. Okay. Um, like below. Yeah. It's a little bit past Rito, so. Mm-hmm. No, I've never been there. So yeah. there's this like little part like in the corner where it's got a lot of like crossing hills yeah. and then it kind of, the vanishing point kind of disappears into the trees. Yeah, I wanted to get mm-hmm. that specific square. So I had to like, look up time of day like yeah. when dawn is when dusk is and i had to just plan my shoot really really carefully because film is set at a light sensitivity yeah mm-hmm. you know do you think like how important is planning your photo shoots and like planning the photo you're gonna take because i feel like a lot of people don't do that and they go like 
on the whim with it and then it comes out kind of bad sometimes or sometimes you get lucky and you comes out good but how important do you think it is to plan a shoot uh with film it's super important it's like the number one thing you have to do <laughs> yeah um but with digital not so much uh with digital you can just kind of shoot away and um especially now with cameras you you know you are a photographer um you can just kind of sh change iso on the fly on the film you can't do that huh? no yeah Damn. you have to stay at a set speed or else you kind of ruin your role. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so when you're when you're when you're doing like the photo processing and all that, um, one of the things you wanted to talk about was putting them on on a digital aspect. Mm -hmm. How do you do that with film? Because I know, for example, I don't know too much about film, so it's kind of like a learning thing for me. Mm -hmm. Like I know when you're taking a, a digital photo with like a Canon or whatever, like right away you take the picture, you could upload it right away. But on film, like you said, you can't do that. How how's the whole process go about? You know, taking a picture with the film until like putting it up on like social media or whatever. So. With film, if it's something that I can share, like where I'm not contractually obligated to turn over the rights and the, and everything to whoever I'm shooting it for, um, I'd go into my dark room, which is my bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> um, I go ahead and develop, which takes around 20-ish minutes. Um, I let it dry. You have to let film dry before you scan it. Yeah. Or else uh, you get like hair or you get dust on it and it's a pain to take off. Take it out. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to put it on a flatbed or you have to put it on a light table and scan it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been doing film for? Like the film? Because you, you just recently got into digital, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. like how long did you do it for? And then how was that change for you to go into digital? So I've been, I, I started film right off the bat. So I've been doing film for like 10 years now. 10 years. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, and digital is honestly, it's not as easy as I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole different learning curve that's kind of geared to a different mindset. Yeah. So with film you have to plan every shot because you only have a set amount of shots yeah. in a roll you know mm -hmm. with digital you can shoot away without having to worry about like oh you know like is everything that i need to get right yeah for me to get the shot i can play with my lighting i can play with the poses i can play with um aperture depth of field all of that you know, without having to worry about taking up role. Yeah, like unlimited shots and everything too, mm -hmm. like you said in the film, you know. So then that, so you're very experienced in the photography industry and things like that. So mm -hmm. how do you plan a shoot from the very beginning? And how do you go about like ending a photo shoot and then sending them to your clients, especially if it's like film? Because mm -hmm. that's a whole different like type of industry that you're working with a client and all that. So how's your process of like getting a photo shoot done from beginning to end? So when I do a photo shoot, like my last, my most recent one was a wedding. Um, Did you do that one with film? Or yeah, was it, yeah, yeah they, okay, wanted, wow. they wanted that done in film, which was really cool because I never get people that want to do film anymore. <laughs> but um, I guess the, the lady's mom, like she was into it when she was younger or whatever, yeah. and she really wanted it. Um, so I took that one with my portrait camera. That one I, I didn't post on social media or whatever because I wanted them to be able to do all that themselves. So like when it comes to that, like first you have to sign a contract. You have to be very honest with people. Like, look, film it isn't a thing where you can like shoot a million pictures really fast. You're very limited. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I might miss some shots like fully up front. I straight up might miss a moment because I have to shoot i have to measure i have to reload i have to wind you know i have to do a million things <laughs> but they but they asked for film though so they have to understand that, right, right? Yeah, yeah yeah and luckily for me that she was very understanding she was super cool about it um i think i ended up doing like uh 10 ish rolls for them yeah which how is much is 10 rolls yeah about a hundred pictures a hundred pictures yeah. okay per roll no 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 oh, just that's 10 total roll. yeah total okay. total Damn. 100 okay mm -hmm. so you're very limited yeah that is yeah, crazy yeah. especially so for a wedding they asked for like 300 500 photos mm -hmm. so yeah that is crazy yeah, so i so guess like what's been like the most challenging part of the film for you um mostly it's the setup and the time like how much time it takes to take the actual pictures um so like we ended up for that wedding we ended up meeting two to three weeks before and taking pictures with family taking pictures of the dress of you know them together and all that and then uh, on the day of the actual ceremony, I only shot about a roll, maybe two, I want to yeah. say, of the actual ceremony and reception. Damn, yeah. so that is crazy, man. Mm -hmm. And what is something that you would probably recommend photographers to to really know when they're getting in photography in general, to mm -hmm. really get on and study on maybe something that you've experienced that like was kind of like a like, oh, snap, you know, I ran into a situation. I should have learned this. You know, like, what is that one thing? Honestly, it's the it's gonna be the dumbest thing. It's lens caps. Lens caps. Make okay. sure your lens cap is off. Uh huh. Don't don't just start shooting. Honestly, I've done yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't just start shooting and then like find a blank roll and think what's going on. Yeah. And it, your lens cap is on. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Got you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then 
second to that is probably learn how depth of field works. Mm, especially with film. So how does that work? Mm -hmm. So I, I work with medium format or, or large format. Um, so depth of field is really reduced. Um, I think equivalent on medium format that I use is going to be half of 35 mil, which is what everyone is used to seeing. So like F6 or F5.6, yeah. which is like from your tip of your nose to like the back of your ear-ish okay, on medium that. format is going to be from tip of your nose to your eye. Okay. So it's going to be halved. That F-stop type of things, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I like that. And so uh, what has been like something that like, something you've done in the film that came out very beneficial to you? That like something that like big came out of and then what's one thing that like kind of took you in a step back a little bit? So, when, like I said, the, the thing that helped me the most uh, overall in my journey in photography and art in general is just being able to set my ego aside and being able to take a step back and say, like, okay, this is too much for me. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to handle this with the skill set that I have and be able to, you know, to do that. Yeah. And so an interesting question comes out of that because I, I see a lot of people who where I've even done it, where it's like, mm -hmm. you think the photo is really good and you get too prideful about it. I'm like, no, this is the greatest photo and somebody might not like it. And so I always think about it like, it's not about you, it's about your client and things like that. Um, just speak a little bit on that, on how important do you think it is to to let go of like your ego and how you said and really, you know, please the client, even though if you don't like it. A lot of people maybe have like struggles like letting go of that, mm -hmm. of like, you know, that they're the best and things like that. And so they end up having bad relationships with clients, things like that. Um, how important do you think it is to just let go of your ego and really focus on what the client wants and not you? So at the end of the day, clients are what pay for everything that you have. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so true. it doesn't matter if you think the picture is awful or if the shoot went so sideways that it's unsalvageable. Yeah. If they like it, they like it. You know, mm -hmm. you, you just kind of have to go with it. Um, yeah. Like sometimes I'll ask a client like, hey, like if it's cool with you, don't don't tag me or, you know, whatever. Like if I'm not comfortable with that body of work representing my skill set, yeah, then I'll ask them to do that. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they're cool about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 rough. Even with people that like disagree with your work or disagree with your quality of work. Yeah. Um, I, I've run into several of those people, and I I don't like to like tell them like, oh, you're wrong. I'm right. Yeah. I'm the photographer. You know, I I try to take everyone's word with equal amounts of value. Yeah. Because there's someone that I could potentially work with in the future, and if they say they if they see something that they don't like in my work, I need to think like, well, okay, hold on, why don't how can they I like adjust? It? Yeah, how how yeah. can I adapt to make to better my skill set? Yeah. You know, mm. yeah. And and so what is it like? How do you deal with like the negatives criticism of all that? Like as a photographer, maybe like people who don't really want to support your artwork or or think you're maybe like some people get it where like they think that they're probably a joke. And so it's like, how do you deal with the negative impacts of all that stuff? How do you overcome that? Um, so a lot of that is just kind of getting out of your own head about it. Like, especially when you're starting out, when you, you're starting out in photography, like I said, you're not going to be great, yeah. <laughs> especially in, in film photography, but even digital, like you're not going to be great. Your eye isn't going to be developed. I feel like film is harder than digital, no? Uh, or you think it's easier than digital? I think they're completely different animals and they both have very steep learning curves for different reasons, you know? Um, so I, I think it's an injustice to say that one is harder than the other for a specific reason that they don't really have in common. But especially when your eye is developing still, you're going to get a lot of criticism and people saying that, like, hey, like you missed this, you could do this better, whatever. But just take it and learn from it. You don't have to stop and shut down. And so on, on the social media side now, um, how important do you think it is to brand yourself and put your work on social media? Especially like nowadays where like people are so like very fragile and critical on your work and all that. Like how do you overcome that? But also like how important do you think it is to put yourself out there in a digital space? So the way the world works right now, I think it's super important to have an online presence, especially now. Um, like 90% of my work comes from Instagram. Yeah, people that see my work and say, hey, I like this. Can you do something similar for me? Or, hey, I like how this turned out. Can we work together to get something that I like, you yeah. know? Mm. Um, so I 
every once in a while I run into older photographers mostly that don't really have an online presence. They have like a website, but it's like super basic. So do you whatever. work on branding as well? Like do you help people brand or? Uh, I or try no? to. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really super like technically oriented myself, yeah. <laughs> but like, um, I, I don't want to say he's a friend. He's more like a friend slash mentor, okay. I guess. I, I helped him get on Instagram and like kind of try to start branching out. Um, but it's it's rough out there, you know. There's yeah. a, there's a everyone's a photographer now. You got cameras in your pocket now. Exactly. Yeah. It's just about. Mm -hmm. Well, what would you think it is like the the biggest difference from that? From like anybody can take a photo mm -hmm. and from hiring a photographer. So the difference between taking a picture with your phone and hiring a photographer with a, with a well developed eye is that it's going to be lighting and framing and probably like subject matter like for things that photographers would take and consider of rather than just anybody taking a photo right right something that looks cool versus something that looks great and beautiful you know got you and so also marketing yourself as a photographer mm -hmm. um a lot of photographers don't really kind of know how to do that yet especially people who are starting up so what is the the key things that you would kind of recommend when it comes to trying to get clients besides Instagram, like maybe ads or maybe putting yourself in a marketplace. Like what is the one key thing that you definitely have to do as a photographer in order to get yourself booked or things like that? You have like to that? do the legwork. You have to do the legwork. You have to go to events. You have to talk to people. A lot of photographers I've met are reclusive and like very yeah. lo like loner-ish mm -hmm. kind of. I know I am. <laughs> yeah. And I personally hate the legwork. But it's something that I have to you do just have to, to be in work, yeah, to mm -hmm. be working. Mm -hmm. And so during the pandemic and everything, like last year, how did you get through that? And is there something that changed for you that you probably never thought you would have done, but you you did something and something came out of that? So I started doing like studio work, kind of, um, and it's something that I never thought I would touch, just because I was a studio aid for about a year two, and I hated studio work. Um, I thought it was like painstakingly slow and just. It, it bored me out of my mind while I was a studio assistant. And, um, but I mean, it, it was one of the only ways that you could work during the pandemic, you know? Yeah, you, you had a lot of free time. Yeah. yeah. Also, is there something that like, you had to maybe also sacrifice in a way to keep becoming an artist? Or that? Like, did you have a support system when you started like photography and all that? Oh God, no. No, um, okay. <laughs> no. So how did um, that go about? No, my family thought, thinks art is a joke. Um, okay. Yeah, they're, they're I'm very... I'm curious about that because I went through the same thing, so I'm kind of curious how you went through that. Yeah, so they're very, like, not old-fashioned, but very close-minded, I guess, as people and what constitutes real work and what constitutes a hobby. So for them, my work is purely, like, a hobbyist. Me, like, having fun and prancing around and clicking a button, you know? Yeah. Um, for, for me, it's serious work, obviously. I take my work very seriously, and, and I take pride in my work, yeah. you know? Um but it's definitely a hurdle that I had to get over. And um, it's something that took me very long to get over. Um, so a lot of my artistic work that I have displayed like in galleries and stuff yeah. is more about me expressing my loneliness that I felt because of them that they didn't take me seriously or didn't support me yeah. in, in my journey, artistic journey, yeah. And what's, what's I guess like the biggest thing that that you had to really like, did you change because of the way they felt or did you just keep going and like, did you kind of be like, well, they're going to be mad at me now, but then, you know, later on they'll understand? Um, not, not really. Uh, so when I really started getting into it, into it, like started actually devoting like time towards developing my skills, I was already in like my first semester of university. So I wasn't really with them that much. And I had a little bit more freedom to explore like that side of me you know yeah mm -hmm. mm -hmm. what's well, been like one of the pieces of works that like that you really like were so passionate about like as far as like maybe telling the story behind it something like the piece of work that you've made that you were really proud about that like you're glad that you made that piece or something that meant too much to you so mm -hmm. there is actually one frame that i've never showed anyone it's n never been displayed or anything and it, i don't think it ever will be displayed i don't yeah. i don't want it to um, but there's this one time when I was in Page, Arizona, and I don't know if you've ever been there. Page, no. Mm -hmm. It's a super small town. Um, I think there's like a post office and it has like one room in it, which yeah. is like the postmaster's office. Um, and there's like a couple houses. Um, I stayed there one night in my car cause it was like 
midnight ish when I got when I drove in. So I just pulled off on the start road and I slept in my car. Mm -hmm. But before I slept, I started going to bed. I saw like all the lights in the in the town were out except for one like one little like off in the distance like a street light was lit up, and uh, I was able to capture like the majority of the, the majority of the town centered around that one little street lamp mm. and why why did that one mean so much to you um i don't know but well i, I do know but mm. <laughs> so at, at the time i think it was my first spring break first year away from like el paso properly mm. uh, that i didn't come back right away um uh, so i was very was like secluded and trying to figure out what i was doing who i was okay. as an individual versus who I was um, around my family, you know? So it kind of made me feel like, hey, there I am. Like, it's just me alone in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> okay, I like that. Yeah. Like trying to figure yourself out and mm-hmm. who, who that light is that represents you. Yeah. Okay, and so going into the storytelling part, um, how important do you think it is to really tell stories behind your photos rather than just taking a picture and because of the composition and all that like what do you how important do you think storytelling is you know it depends on the situation yeah like uh journalistically i think that is more important than the actual image itself you know story is king you need to have everything in context for that image to make sense to make sure it's not taken out of context Mm -hmm. you know but artistically it it really depends on what you're trying to get across and what you're trying to accomplish personally yeah you know like I've been in some expositions where the prompt is just, um, I guess, or what was the last one that I had? Um, It was in, I I had one in Israel recently. Mm -hmm. I was in one in Israel. And their prompt was just showcasing different architecture from around the world. So I went down here to all the missions and took pictures of all the missions because that's like the most like landmark thing in this area. So there it's not so much about story. And it's more about like, hey, look how the culture here influenced the building techniques in this area. Yeah. You know? Cool. And so so how do you see did you did you choose to want to stay in El Paso or is it something that you maybe wanted to branch out of El Paso or in your photography? So I've been doing photography in all of my travels yeah. so far and I just kind of happened to land in El Paso well, what do you uh, feel like makes so special, El Paso so special in a way I guess for you oh it was just super cheap to live here yeah okay yeah. got you so you're not from here then right you're no no I am oh, you I am from okay, here yeah. gotcha. but uh, I've lived in other cities um, for several years and El Paso is just super cheap to live in um, for the amount of money that I'm making and yeah. so what's 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 I guess that one you were very experienced in photography so what's that one big piece of like general advice that you've been given or somebody like that you want to give out for photographers who are barely starting out or maybe something that you've experienced that you for sure want to make sure that these people know when they're out there and doing photography um don't be afraid and don't be ashamed uh i've seen a lot of well me personally that i've been in other cities and in different photographic communities i've seen a lot of like inside bullying of like oh like look at this poor soul that has like this bare bones camera like who cares like it, it, it really the camera sh- doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've know? done it myself. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, I shot with, or I'm still shooting with a camera from the '60s. Okay. You know, like, yeah. and the pictures come out amazing. Yeah. Yeah, like it's the, it's one of the sharpest cameras that I own, um, and I also shoot with an A7 something or other. I'm, I'm not really the Sony. Really yeah. Yeah, the Sony. It's a Sony, mm-hmm. um, which is great. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic but i would trade it for a simpler camera like that if mm-hmm. i hadn't already invested in it i would trade yeah. for a simpler camera and so so you're, you're you're saying it's not about the the equipment it's about the the person behind it right and exactly. the person taking the photo how important do you think it is collaboration wise like to collaborate with other photographers um i've seen a little bit where it was competitive for a while like people are always on doing their own thing photographers and then they started collaborating and they grew a little bit more on that um would you take any collaboration and then how important do you think collaborations are so i love working with other photographers as long as their ego doesn't take up the room gotcha. you know um i've met a lot of photographers uh i met one in el paso a few years ago he's an older guy yeah. but 
his ego is enough to take up the state. You know, he he wouldn't listen to any of my suggestions. He shot down any of my ideas immediately, and it was just his way or the highway. And I yeah. just ended up giving up on the project because that's that's not a way to work with someone. No. You know, mm-hmm. you um, can grow with them. Yeah. yeah, and even if you know someone's skill set is below yours, it, it's their opinion is still valid. Yeah. You know, because even if their skill isn't as great as yours, there's going to be other people at hit their skill level yeah. that you're going to be able to talk to and reach through through them. Mm-hmm. And how, yeah. how important do you think it is to either take each collaboration or do you deny some of them? Um, it depends how busy I am. Like if I'm too busy to like even think, then I might say like, hey, you know what? Not right now, but give me a little while and I'll let you know. You know, but I'm always open to work with anyone, yeah. really. And what's the, what's the biggest project you've done? And then explain kind of like your, your process on how you got there, maybe sacrifices, things you had to do in order to get there. Like one of your biggest things, like your biggest achievements in a way. Uh, so my biggest achievement is being uh, showcased in a photography school in Galitz, okay. in Israel. Okay. Um, they actually had me and a few other photographers from around the world mm. doing like a little showcase on black and white photography. Um and it was just this really cool thing that I kind of stumbled upon by chance. Okay. Um, my professor, the the one that taught me how to use, like how to shoot and properly and everything. Yeah. Um, he knows people over there, and he said, "Hey, like they're having this um, this exhibition. Like, drop your name. You know, you never know." Um, and it took, I want to say, the selection process process was like a good two or three months um, before they like whittled down like the final hundred people that submitted their work. Um, and it was just very nerve wracking, um, to, to know that people well established in the photographic community and like so well versed in photography to be looking at your work and pulling it apart. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just, it it was exhausting if I'm honest. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you feel about that, about like all the whole situation? Uh, honestly, it, I didn't feel great. Like, in, up until the point where they told me, like, "Hey, yeah, we we picked one of your one of your frames to display," I, it, it was awful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but after that, it was kind of not not a letdown, but kind of uh, I, I was playing it up in my head. You know, it was like, "Oh, this isn't that big of a deal." Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like any other exhibition. It just happens to be in this place in this certain building, you know. Mm. And, and and networking too, like how important do you think it is to like push your work out there as much as possible and get it out and displayed and everything too? Um, it's I think it's more or I think it's less important now to have it displayed like in an official building, like um, like in galleries and stuff. Because I don't know, but like. I don't know about you guys or what you guys have seen, but I've seen a lot less people be interested in going to a gallery show than looking up someone on Instagram and looking through Just their, their page. Yeah, yeah, their page. You know, which is a shame. I, I think more people should go out to galleries and see I, the real. Yeah, yeah, because a lot of um, for a lot of artists, I guess that I've met, that's like a big thing in their head still, like being in a, in an actual gallery. Like that's a very like wow moment for them. You know. Just being the original artwork. And so is it is it just photography that you do or is it like some other type of like creative thing that you do? Like maybe art, writing, things like that? Um, I do help my friends with like writing projects that they have every once in a while. Um, but it's I'm, I'm more of a like, hey, wouldn't it be funny if like yeah. said scenario were to happen within your story and then they put it in their own words to where it fits their narrative. Have you ever done filmmaking or no? I no, haven't. No. no. Is that something that you're probably interested in, like getting into and things like that? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've I've thought about it, mm-hmm. and um, I've actually talked to a couple of filmmakers here in El Paso, yeah. Um, and yeah, I've just kind of offered my help, I guess, or not even help, but expressed interest in being involved in the project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what 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 keeps you going a lot? Like when it like, what keeps you going in your photography? Like, do you ever like get unmotivated, and like, how do you overcome that? So motivation is like one of my biggest struggles and it's going to be one of my biggest struggles until the day that I die. Um, But sometimes I just can't get it in my head to take my like six pound camera up a mountainside and sit there for three hours waiting for the sun to be right, you know? Yeah. Um, And a lot of that, I guess, has been alleviated by me getting into digital Mm -hmm. because like my landscape camera is like i said around six pounds 
plus my pack, my water, my food, all that, versus something that weighs like a pound and a half. Well, so so I want I kind of want to ask this, as growing in the in the photography industry, uh, it's also very competitive. How do you see putting in the work to become a professional photographer? How, how do you think it is? How important do you think it is to take sacrifices in order to become a successful photographer and like putting in the work? Um, it's like with anything, you gotta want it. You gotta want you it. You have to want it. You have to mm-hmm. be willing to put in the time it takes to develop photography as a skill Mm -hmm. because photography isn't something that you can just pick up and just shoot a million frames and eventually you'll get good you have to dedicate time to developing your eye to developing your your shooting style to developing your lighting style your lighting preferences and all of that you know it's it's not something that you can just pick up yeah Mm -hmm. so it's it's super important for you to want to dedicate that time because if you're dedicating it without having the love in the skill it's not that your photos are going to turn out bad but they're going to start looking like stock images because i know mine at at some points have started looking at like stock images when my heart isn't really in it what do you think is something that photographers should really pay attention to or really study that's going to help them grow in, in a certain skill so like what's been like one skill that that's helped you a lot that you learned and what skill do you think that any photographer should really learn um so the biggest thing that I learned that helped me the most was learning how to use a gray card. Gray card, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you know what that is? Yeah, yeah. like the little white balance thing and all that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think now they have like color cards yeah. that have it like in there. But yeah, it's just to balance the image uh, under the lighting conditions and under the shooting conditions, yeah. you know. Um, learning how to use that makes like the darkroom process and the photo editing like digitally is yeah. so much easier because you can just kind of sample from that frame and just keep it consistent for the rest of your frames gotcha and so so what's coming up for you like like different projects you have come up what, what is your end goal in photography so my end goal in photography isn't really a goal for like my work it's yeah. a goal for me okay so photography started out as this kind of thing where I learned how to express myself without using words because I'm not great at words. Um, So like I said, most of my work is me exploring like my isolation and my loneliness. And I want to get to a point where I get past that and it reflects in my work, Mm -hmm. you know, where I can start expressing myself a little bit more liberally artistically, like start playing with lights a little bit more mm-hmm. start playing with color a little bit more um and you know th- things like that just get to a point where i am happy no matter what like i guess what comes out of the camera mm-hmm. just expressing your creativity to the max exactly. right type of thing yeah. and how important do you think it is to to keep your creativity and like keep your imagination a lot of people tend to lose it as they either get older or things happen and all that how important do you think it is to stay creative and stay inspired and, and imagine have your imagination so i think staying inspired and staying creative are two different things um i've seen people with have like sparks of inspiration but have none of the creative ability to be able to flesh it out you know so i think it's important to have a goal in mind going into a project Mm -hmm. and going into something that you want to dedicate your time to or else you're just going to waste your time yeah so like me personally one thing that i've always wanted to do ever since i picked up a camera uh, up till this day which i'm starting to work on now is kind of like a passion project um it's a it's a big series that i'm starting to work on about i guess the love that we give things in our lives gotcha yeah okay and so what's What's that one thing you you wish, you know now that you wish you would have known when you first got started, whether it's in film or digital or anything like just as a photographer in general? Um, the probably the most important thing that I wish I would have learned now is that everyone's kind of in the same boat. Okay. Everyone is just as afraid of being criticized, of being laughed at as you are. You know, you're, there's no one better than you are, like in a better mental state, I guess. Yeah. When they're on in front of everyone. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's it's just a, a mental thing that everyone, yeah. I guess. That how, how did you overcome that? Um, you just kept going, kept pushing. No, no. I, 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 I've, I've, I just learned to laugh at myself. Like okay. if I do mess up, or like if I end up looking silly, like yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I did. You know what? Yeah, I did. And yeah. that was funny. That was a funny point in time when I thought that this quality of work was something um, that I thought was good or like this quality of work was I was something that I thought was bad when it was really good, you know, like. Yeah. I, you gotta learn to laugh but at yourself but it's all part of the growth process as well like that's how you grow as a photographer you take in judgment you you laugh at your old work but as long as you see yourself progress and grow yeah and so how do you how do you what do you think on that like how do you think about you know limiting yourself and then also just pushing yourself to grow so I don't think you should limit yourself um, if you're trying to develop something that's very specific then absolutely you know you need to stay in your lane and um, every now and then you need to be able to take yourself out of that mindset and look from outside the box. Um, and another thing is like creative, like, like comfort zones more than anything. So mm -hmm. like comfort zones are creative cancer. Yeah, you, you, exactly. you can't, I agree. You, you can't be like in your groove and putting out like something c consistently good without getting repetitive. Yeah. You know, like, uh, what is it? What's... Um, the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower has been shot to death, <laughs> yeah. you know, and don't get me wrong. There's beautiful images still being taken of it, but there aren't images that haven't been taken already. You know what I mean? So, so how do you, how do you see being unique with your artwork and maybe capturing things from like a different perspective? So that something that's very personal to each photographer, I think. So like, I personally don't like street style photography. Yeah. So I look at it very differently from someone that likes street style photography. So my pictures are going to look very different from a street photographer. Yeah. You know, and it's it's just personal preference and be, and being able to push yourself out of that little bubble that you've put yourself in. Got you. And so just before we end, where where can somebody reach out to you and work with you and, you know, give yourself like a little plug in a way? So um, my Instagram is Strange Studios Photo. You guys can always reach me there. Anyone that has any questions or wants to learn to shoot, whatever, I'm always down to work with anyone, no matter the skill level. Yeah. And I'm not going to, you know, put anyone down or anything for not knowing something. Because no. you know? that's what it's all about is like making sure that we all help support each other and collaborate and grow together. Right. Um, exactly. Somebody told me recently that like if, if you were if everybody's so competitive you're only going to get so far with it but if if you're collaborating you're all working together you're going to get even farther than what you expect yeah and so i really think that's really mm -hmm. true yeah yeah and like and there's always little resources like like i personally i'm part of a few clubs like uh there's a film of the month club that i'm in yeah. where they send you like a mystery role of film okay. so you don't know what's in that what's in that box so yeah. that's put me pushing myself out of my comfort zone i, I don't know what i'm gonna shoot and until i get that role of film yeah and so, so how do you challenge yourself a lot as a, as like a photographer? Like what keeps you really expanding your creativity? So the way that I do that is I find something that makes me deeply uncomfortable yeah. in, in both subject matter and skill level, and I go for it. Gotcha. Um, and usually with that kind of stuff, like if it's a shoot with a person, I'll say like, hey, you know what? I'm not really comfortable with this area of photography. I'll yeah. do it for free or very little money because it's probably not going to turn out great. <laughs> no, it's you like know? a little testing for you. Like yeah, exactly. Um, and with and with the creative side of it, I guess it's not really much of a problem just because, um, you know, everything is like reviewed for gallery work and all that uh, or I'll throw it up on my Instagram see how well it does see how well people like it and um, and I always appreciate people giving me feedback on Instagram like hey this doesn't look great or you know you missed something here that you could have done that looks a little bit better than yeah. what you actually got you know and, and, and as a starter photographer what do you see how do you see doing free work first before you start asking for money and like clients and all that um, or is that something that you would do or you would just go straight into like charging and things like that so I think that's more of a personal choice for the photographer. A, a lot of photography is like personal choices that you really got to be comfortable with yourself in. Because yeah. um, like I'm very comfortable in my skill set. Mm -hmm. I have no problems walking into a shoot without knowing the lighting conditions or anything like that and being able to shoot and get printable pictures, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm very comfortable in my skill set. But like younger me... Um, first starting out yeah. I'd be like hey is it cool like if I'm like your quote unquote second shooter and I just kind of tail you to see what you do how you do it you don't have to pay me or anything I'm just really here for the experience yeah kind of like an internship type of thing kind, yeah. kind of yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. and so how would how would you reach out to like a client or a business and all that and like begin that process of 
getting your first client or your first gig or your first internship, a lot of people get like how you said they're, they're too comfortable and it's all about getting out of your comfort zone. So how would you go out and as a photographer, make that first step into working yourself as a business in photography? Um, find someone's email or find someone's Instagram, find something, you know, and just message them. Uh, worst case scenario, they don't look at it or worst case scenario, they say no, but that's not exactly a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, find smaller local brands. Like I've helped some, uh, smaller local brands yeah. with like, uh, like some product photography or like some promotional work. Yeah. Um, and that's when I was barely starting getting to get into portraiture. Yeah. Like I said, Hey, like. I'm not super comfortable with portraiture. Like, if you want to help me out, I'll help you out. I'll give you the rights to the images, you know, and you can use them however you want for promotional work or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, just message people. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to ask like, hey, are you willing to work with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so also how important, like nowadays it's just so easy to like just send out messages to people and you don't know what's going to come out of there. Yeah. Would you say it's more important to, perfect a piece of work or just put all the work out there as much as you can because it only takes one to hit so uh you know that's that's tricky um so me i like to painstakingly go through my pictures like section by section to make sure like everything is right before i throw it out there but that's just like a bad habit that I've had from film photography because like to be able to get a print, you have to have like uniform plane of, of focus and like uniform depth of field and, you know, to be able to get a usable print. And I think it's just a bad habit that I have to break because not every shot is going to be a banger shot. You know, yeah. you're going to get crap shoots. You're, not everything is going to look perfect, you know. And um, and yeah, that's just a bad habit I have to break. Yeah. And so so how do you know when it's like, when you've gotten the image that you wanted, or is it like, for example, like I ask painters that, I tell them, I'm like, how do you know when your work is finished? Like, do you just automatically say like, I'm finished? Or is there something that you wish you would have added more onto it? So there's- uh, You just never know. <laughs> no, you, you do know, but it's, the real answer to that is it's never finished. Cause there was always going to be a thing that you're gonna kick yourself for that you didn't include, yeah. or you're gonna kick yourself for including it. it. You know, there's always gonna be that little aspect of printmaking or like, uh, or being a, a, a visual artist, I guess. Yeah. And so I, I, that's what I think is like, it's just, it's more important of like, just, you know, making sure that you just keep creative with it and you, you put in your, your imagination into it. But um, other than that, I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to mention. I know that you wanted to mention about the digital space and the digital aspect of photography and all that. Is there something like in there that you wanted to mention and talk about things like that? Um, yeah. So uh, I've met a lot of younger photographers over the years and a lot of them are like, I guess if I could say something to everyone collectively that's just starting out or not super experienced yeah. is don't look for a shot and just shoot for that specifically when you're starting out. But you need to be able to take a picture and see a picture within that picture okay. when you're first starting out. Because when you don't have eyes yet, you're, you're not going to be able to find that automatically and be able to shoot for it specifically. So, so speak on that a little bit, a picture within a picture, kind of explain that a little bit more. So like, let's say I'm going to take a picture of you right now. If I were just starting out, I would take a wider shot and then I'd see like what framing looks best to suit this lighting scenario or this space that I'm in to not make you look like you're in a tiny box or not make you look tiny like in a big room. So experiment you know? different angles, different like things, different versions of that one shot. Right, mm -hmm. exactly, yeah. But you need to be able to like find that over the years, like to be able to find it right away and just shoot it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not gonna happen right away. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So so cool, I mean, just the last thing is like, just give yourself another plug a little bit of like, where can people find you and yeah. reach out, look at your so, work and everything too. So yeah, um, my Instagram is Strange Studios. Uh, all my emails and my phones and links are all there on my bio. Um, and you know, like I said, reach out. Um, worst thing I'm going to say is say too busy. probably not right now <laughs> yeah. or, you know, give me a week, you know, whatever, but I'm, I'm not going to leave anyone on red. Yeah. yeah. And collaborations and networking is pretty much key in order to grow. Exactly. So, yeah. so definitely. So thank you guys, everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much. Um, make sure to catch him at the poetography event. Um, he's going to be one of the participants. So make sure you guys come check out his work and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you so much.